Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Corey Kern, and in this video we are going to review some of the abstracts of the research projects that Dr. Sato and his team have been conducting in Japan. At first, I would like to show you a point system that is used by surgeons to conduct safer katsu training. It's based on history of DVTs. If you've had one or someone in your family have one, that's about five points. If you are pregnant, that's four points. If you have varicose veins or if you've been immobilized for a long time, have atrial fibrillation or heart failure, that's three points. You get two points if you're over 60, you have a BMI higher than 30, hyperlipidemia, malignancy, a lower limb tourniquet, or contraceptives, quadriplegia, or a high hemoglobin level. And you get one point if you're age 40 to 58, you're female, or your BMI is between 25 and 30. The higher number of the points, the greater the risk. The katsu training for people corresponding to five points should be avoided. Pregnant women should be avoided as well based on ethics and is necessary to exercise care when providing katsu training for people that originally had a thrombosis. Some patients get a thrombosis in early post-operative period and extreme caution needs to be exercised for those who had a DVT right after surgery. Next is a research project studying the effects of katsu training on hemostasis in healthy adults. And what they found is that not only does katsu not induce fibrin formation by a fibrin D dimer and FDB test, but they also found that it actually has potentially favorable changes that occur in fibrinolytic factors after katsu training in healthy subjects. And that means that not only does it not cause a clot, it actually causes anti-clotting factors. The next research article studied the effects of low load elastic band resistance training combined with blood flow restriction on muscle size and arterial stiffness in older adults. Now they used katsu elastic band BFR and they found that it improves muscle cross-sectional area as well as maximal muscle strength but does not negatively affect arterial stiffness in older adults. The next study examined the effects of walking with blood flow restriction on limb venous compliance in elderly subjects. And they did a six week training program and what they found is that there was no significant change in arm compliance in the BFR walk group. This study shows the first evidence that six weeks of walking exercise with BFR may improve limb venous compliance in untrained elderly female subjects. So this shows that walking with katsu bands improves your venous compliance and helps with your circulation. In this research study, they looked at hemodynamic and hormonal responses to a short-term low-intensity resistance exercise with the reduction of muscle blood flow. They looked at growth hormone, GH, vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, noradrenaline, NE, and insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1. And what they found is that with katsu, it significantly stimulates the exercise-induced growth hormone, IGF, and VEGF responses with the reduction of cardiac preload during exercise. And this is a unique method for rehabilitation for patients with cardiovascular disease. This study looked at the repetitive restriction of muscle blood flow and how it enhances mTOR signaling pathways in rat models. And what they found is that the repetitive restriction of muscle blood flow significantly decreases the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillary beds and that enhances the mTOR signaling pathway in skeletal muscle using this rat model. And this plays a major role in diminishing muscle atrophy under various conditions in human studies. The next study is examining the effects of low intensity elastic band resistance exercise combined with blood flow restriction on muscle activation. As you get older, it becomes more difficult to activate those fast switch muscle fibers. And the conclusion was that katsu training on using elastic bands for resistance enhances muscle activation and may be an effective method to promote muscle hypertrophy in older adults or patients with low level of activity. This next article is a case report examining a 34-year-old woman with femoral head avascular necrosis. She went through three months, a total of 28 sessions of katsu training. And what they found was that katsu training was extremely useful for a rehabilitation method 
patients with this disease, but they do acknowledge that further larger scale investigations should be carried out to support these findings. This next project is a case report of a female with femoral medial condylar osteonecrosis. And what they found is that after six months, MRIs actually showed shrinkage of the necrotized region as a result of bone tissue, tissue remodeling. So the CATSU training actually improved blood flow to the area to help rebuild the bone. This case report was a little bit longer. It involves 152 weeks of CATSU training for a patient with a knee meniscectomy over three years. And what that shows is that long-term CATSU exercise were a highly safe and effective training method for a patient with a knee meniscectomy. This research article examine the effects of low-intensity katsu resistance training on skeletal muscle size, strength, and endurance capacity in patients with ischemic heart disease. And what they found is that low levels of resistance training with katsu shows to be a promising and effective resistance method in patients undergoing cardiac rehab. This case report examined the combination of CATSU training and branch chain amino acid intake for a patient after aortic valve replacement surgery. And what they found was no deterioration of circulatory hemodynamics and side effects during the course. In conclusion, the combined use of CATSU training and branch chain amino acids intake early after cardiac operation seems to be a safe and effective way to obtain muscle hypertrophy and muscle strengthening, but further studies are needed to clarify. This research article studied the hemodynamic and neurohumoral responses to the restriction of femoral blood flow by CATSU training in healthy subjects. And what they found is that CATSU training in supine subjects reproduces the same effects of standing. And so for those who have been bedridden or supine for a prolonged period of time, CATSU training at low levels can reproduce the same response as if they were standing. And finally, this last research article is a case of dementia presenting remarkable improvement in activities of daily living through CATSU training. And what they found is that a patient with dementia using CATSU training for six months had remarkable improvements in motor function. And so they think that CATSU training may be an effective method improving ADL in patients with dementia. So this is a great case report that supports the notion that applying low loads of CATSU can actually improve blood flow through the brain and possibly reduce the effects of debilitating cognitive diseases.